Hey bro, how you doing? In this video, I've got a couple points that I want to go over regarding how you can improve your ability to do work and to focus on your work. To kick things off, this is a very difficult thing that even I struggle with myself, but it's turn the fucking notifications off on your phone. I go through waves of like convincing myself that I need this one specific app to have notifications on, but it's just such a fallacy and the amount of a time and attention that we don't realize gets sucked away from us when we have notifications that just constantly pop up on our phone, we we don't realize just how detrimental that is to our ability to focus. So yeah, a lot of us, including myself, we're convinced that we need to be constantly available, but it's honestly just being rude to yourself. It's, it's basically just saying that, yeah, we don't respect ourselves because we don't respect our attention. Anyone can have our attention at any point. You send us, you send me a message, you call me, I'm always available whenever you want. My attention means nothing. That's pretty much what we're saying when we allow all these notifications on our phone. And it's just, it's honestly just depressing looking at people and how most people use their phone because it just has such a grip on them, on their attention, on their focus. They'll be doing something and then like, not only do they get notifications, but it actually like dings. There's like a notif notification sound, which now that's like very alien to me. Whether or not I have like a notification that will pop up on the home screen, I've for probably the last two years, never had any kind of vibration or ding sound that's like all turned off. Even just having things coming up on your phone, I don't want it. And it's not conducive with staying focused. When I want to use my phone, I want to use it for exactly what I plan to use it for. Not seeing some random notification on the home screen and thinking, oh, I'll just respond to that now. No, the best way to like practically go about this is turn everything off and block out time in your calendar that's designated for checking through all your messages, for checking through whatever apps you need. That's the ideal scenario to notifications on your phone. Next thing regarding focus and being able to focus on our work is sleep. We've all heard it, we all know about it, yet all of us, including myself, often find ourselves just not respecting sleep enough. We're way too comfortable to stay up way too late or and then still continue waking up too early. We just don't respect the impact that sleep really has on our performance and our health for that matter, but specifically our ability to do work, our productivity. It, there's endless science that says you can't out like wrestle, outwork a lack of sleep. Being sleep deprived is going to have such a ripple effect on your ability to do work and there's nothing you can do to counter it. There's no amount of coffee. There's no, you are just going to be so operating at a lower level that, yeah, it's, it's something that needs to be held with higher importance. So when it comes to sleeping properly, there's one key thing that a lot of a lot of us overlook, which is the whole concept of sleep efficiency. So many of us, we might try allocate eight hours to being in bed, but being in bed is not the same as being asleep. A good sleep efficiency is actually about 80%, which means of the time that you're in bed, only about 80% of that you're actually asleep, which means if we want to get the ideal eight hours of sleep, you have to be in bed for 10 hours. And yes, that's a long time. But when you really look at, look at the science, look at the research of how important sleep is, you're not going to get more done by staying up later and doing more work. It's your, your productivity is just going to be shit compared to that 
that you can do with enough sleep. So that's the first thing. Then the other side of the equation from the quantity of sleep is the quality of sleep. We need to be taking that into account because a lot of people have really shit quality sleep that they wake up and they don't even feel rested or recovered, even if they should have got enough sleep. And there's probably three big, big things that impact your sleep, maybe four. So alcohol and coffee, they both have pretty huge impacts on your ability to sleep. Even just having one drink will like massively wreck the next night's sleep. And it's like similar to coffee. Coffee has a half-life of about seven hours, I believe. Which, long story short, you ideally want to be cutting your caffeine intake off around midday, if not even earlier. Now, I'll be the first to say that I often don't listen to this because I'm just really trying... I'm really trying to, like, force more work with, like, being caffeinated. But I rationally know that it's it's not the right thing to do. That it's going to be impacting my sleep, which then will impact the next day's... Uh, ability to work so yeah there's alcohol and coffee the next big thing is light a lot of us don't allow our brains to switch off and one of the biggest factors that impact this is light so we want to be massively reducing the amount of light that our that's being exposed to our eyes around one to two hours before we go to sleep many of us will be on our phone or like laptops right up until we go to sleep there's there's a little bit of a cheat code that you can do to maybe not have as much of an effect you can set this up on like a macbook or an iphone i've just got it so that i i triple click the off button and it switches my whole phone to like red because red is the lowest color on the like light spectrum bullshit or whatever long story short it, it has the least impact on messing with your circadian rhythm so if you are going to look at any screens like much later in the day, you ideally want to make sure they're like all red. Sure, there's a way to do that on an Android, but yeah, there's definitely, uh, it's just in settings called color filters on like iPhones and same thing as on like a MacBook. So yeah, you just want to be very wary of light and the impact that light will have on your ability to get to sleep, but also the actual quality of sleep. So you want to keep that in mind. Lastly is one of the arguably the most important things when it comes to quality of sleep. This might be quite surprising to you, but I'm pretty sure this was pulled from data from uh, Whoop that, that have access to like millions of people's health uh, metrics. And long story short, one of the biggest things that impacted people's quality of sleep was how close they ate food to going to sleep. And I've definitely noticed this in myself. If I eat food within like a couple hours of going to bed, my like sleep quality is just so much worse. So there's obviously sometimes it's it's hard to stick to this, but you pretty much want to be eating no sooner than like three hours to bedtime. I think there's the there's some nice little rule that someone made up somewhere that I've heard. The like three, two, one sort of thing where three hours before bed, you want to stop eating. Two hours before bed, you want to stop drinking. One hour before bed, you want to stop looking at screens. So that's like a nice little rule you can easily follow. Anyways, that's all of sleep. Lastly, I just want to talk about time compression and the power that this has on our ability to focus on work. So many of us allow ourselves, sometimes often me included, allow ourselves way too much time, often unlimited time to get a task or a project done. But this is a much less effective way of getting through work. The ideal way to get through projects and tasks is to work in sprints. You don't want to be doing a marathon. We want to work in sprints of extreme like work bouts where you're just hyper-focused and you cram the time down. You force yourself that, yes, I need, I have to get this assignment or project or task done within this really short amount of time. 
this just forces you to focus and like dial in way more than you normally would as of like when you're just casually going through the task say no I, I need to get this entire project done in 90 minutes go you'll get so much more work done in so much less time this way work compression and time compression where you squeeze the amount of time that you allow yourself to do a specific thing or a certain like specific amount of work it it honestly just has such a huge impact like it, it makes no sense but it just does we've all experienced this when it comes to school and cramming assignments in at the last the last day you'll have a three-week assignment that you've just completely procrastinated and then all of a sudden you're able to do the whole thing in 24 hours it's like you're able to get a lot done but imagine if you could work in with that kind of intensity but always it's like then then you're working at a whole nother level anyway bro that was just a few quick points regarding focus and improving your productivity when it comes to working. Hope you enjoyed, hope you got something out of this and I'll see you in the next video.